Hi guys, it's Franz. Welcome to week 107 of the channel on Monday series. I want to colorize some medium and to do so I'm using pen pastel as a pigment. And the medium I want to colorize is the light paste from Finnevar's Art Basic line. So I'm just scraping a bit of pen pastel on top of the medium, very gently. And then I'm mixing everything up. Now the light paste is so light that it really is very easy to mix in um, a pigment like the pen pastel that I'm using. I wanted to have some more paste so I just added more. I didn't need more pigment. I had um, enough already in there. And as you can see, the color between my pen pastel and the medium isn't that much different. So the paste doesn't alter the color of uh, my pen pastel in this case. Then using a stencil, I'm just adding it to uh, the spread to add a first layer of texture and color. I did place a strip of washi tape on top of the sewing from the previous page as I want to preserve it, though I know it will be partially covered by the photo I want to use. Protecting my journal because I'm going in with some sprays and these are the color bloom sprays. And the first layer is meant to dirty up the second layer because I want to use my orange but I don't want the orange to be too neat. You will see what I mean later on. So I'm also spraying some gray, some gray and some um, very light yellow just to alter um, and to add some shadings to that orange that I will add in the last layer. This is my last layer. And I don't know if you can see it, but the orange is pretty dirty and that's what I meant to do. Adding some water to blend everything nicely together. And I'm dapping the ink away in the middle of my book because I don't want my complete journal to be orange. And as I have some ink over, I'm creating some drippage. I'm using the stress ink to accentuate the shape of my um, texture paste because I will have something on top of it. And the distress ink will also react with what, I'll, what I will be adding later on making my orange even more dirty on the outside of my spread and I'm doing so using several shades of um, Distress Ink and if you would like to know which colors I'm using you can check out my blog where I have a complete list of ingredients for each um, journal on Monday episode. If you go to the um, inspiration tab on the top of my website you can uh, go to the journal on Monday spread uh, page on my website. Um, where all these lists are mentioned. Before I go in with what I call my favorite layer of this spread, <laughs> I first add some more splatters using several um, colors of color bloom uh, in spray inks. And you can make splatters just using the spray like that so if you spray very carefully, it will just make you some splatters. But of course you can also still open up the bottle if you want to have some very thin and fine splatters on your spread. And I'm not leaving um, the splatters to dry completely. I'm taking them away before they're completely dried. This is my favorite layer. This is Tengusho paper. If you've ever taken a workshop with me, you know that I, I'm very fond of Japanese paper. 
Now I cannot apply the soft matte gel directly on my spread as it would make all these splatters that I made with those color blooms move around. Uh, same thing for my distress ink. So I want those to stay in place, but I want to glue my paper down. So I'm applying the soft matte gel directly on the Tengusho paper and then I'm gluing it on my spread. Now on top of the Tengusho paper I can add more glue that won't make uh, the ink move around. And doing the same thing for the other side. And now I can glue it down, making it as flat as possible as I already have a lot of texture going on on my spread. I don't want to have too much creases in there. And I'm really pushing the Tengusho paper um, on the texture so that I have as much of the texture coming through as possible. Now this will push whatever it is I have on my paper to the background, a bit like a wash, but I don't have any um, influence from the inks that are already on my paper doing it this way. If I had done this with a wash, with um, white acrylic paint, for example, all the colors would have blended together, which I don't have in this case, yet I can still push everything to the background like I wanted to do. And now that it's more or less dry, I can cut the excess Tengusha paper away. It's too strong to be ripped off. It would uh, tear um, in a not very neatly way, so I have to trim it using my scissors. And then just going around with some black soot distress ink. You could do the same um, with tissue paper if you don't have any Japanese Tengusho paper. Stamping my um, splattered mark using archival ink and I'm first stamping on my tissue roll that's on my table so that I have a shadow stamping so that it really stays in the background. Then again using archival ink I'm going over stencil wood a piece of cut and dry. I didn't do this with um, distress ink because of all the soft matte gel that I have on my spread and that would act as a resist for the distress ink. Hence the archival ink. So this is the photo that I want to use and I already picked out a couple of scraps uh, of paper that I had laying around so I'm just distressing everything and getting everything ready to put it together and the photo I'm using is my grandmother with the black um, shirt in the middle and seven of her children she had ten in total so my dad is not yet on the photo he wasn't born yet So I'm just putting together all the elements I chose and that I want to use. Those are basically all um, leftover things that I had laying around on my table. The scrap pieces of paper, um, the metal file tab, I wanted to use it on another project and ripped it back off and then it laid around on my table. The scrap pieces of paper, um, the piece of printed ribbon, those are all leftovers from other projects. I'm adding another piece of metal and this is Tim Holtz uh, stencil something, I don't remember how it's called, but you can find it in the list on my, uh, on my blog. Now I also wanted to add this piece of metal on the photo and as I don't want any glue on my photo because it doesn't react nicely with the chemicals from the photo paper. I'm using glue dots. This will help the piece of metal stay in place and won't have any reaction with the, uh, with the photo. I picked out a um, 7-dot studio word band that I want to use. A word sticker, sorry, that I want to use. And then I decided to add um, a paper do doily. So I'm colorizing it using some color blooms and then quickly drying it. Well, trying to, to dry it. <laughs> it kept flying away. So I want to have this one just peeking out from under the photo. 
and I'm gluing everything down using my soft matte gel that I um, transferred in a precision bottle. So yes, even the metal pieces can be glued down with the, with the soft matte gel. Uh, like this one, this is a very rusty mini hinge um, that I got, I don't know where, and I decided to put it on there, just gluing it down using my soft matte gel. And as I like the doily, I decided to add some more, so I'm colorizing another piece, a bigger one this time, just in the same way. And this time I switched my brain on, so I'm using my picky tool to keep it in place while drying it. And now I can attach it to my spread, and I'm just doing so using um, my tiny attacher. So I picked out a couple of metals that I want to add. These are have all been home rusted. And this is a piece of uh, ribbon from two weeks ago that was still on my table, believe it or not. I have a little jar on my table with all these leftovers. I don't like to throw them away. So deciding which gears I want to use and then deciding to use them all. And I'm choosing on the edge of my table, I have all my metal that's rusting and I added a couple of new ones. So I'm choosing one from there as well. And now I can just adhere everything to the paper and I'm doing so using breads and glue and, um, and that's it. On top of the metal, I want to add some art ingredients Mica Flakes by Finnevar. So I'm first applying a tiny bit of soft matte gel. But I also want to add other art ingredients. Like this um, glass beads, and this is the licorice. and some art sugar. Um, I admitted on a Prima live stream that before I became a Finnevar brand ambassador, I never used <laughs> glitter of any kind. And now I'm addicted. I have to admit, I'm addicted. I want to add it everywhere. Prove is, I'm also adding some on the other side of my spread, so first I'm starting with the art sugar, again gluing it down with soft matte gel, taking the excess off. And what I like to do with the glass beads as well as adding it um, in a cluster is to add just one here and there on the spread. It's a very fun and soft dimensional element to add. And 
and then I'm getting ready to add my wording and this week it says personality is an act of high courage flung in the face of life because every time I look at this photo I think of the 10 children that my grandparents raised together I wanted to add some more splatters on the lace it was looking too neat to my liking and now I can glue my uh, wording down. I just printed it out on my computer on a piece of craft cardstock, making sure it's straight, more or less. And to make it pop just a bit more, I'm adding an art extravagance texture paste clear crackle. This will blend all the distress ink that I have on my paper without uh, moving the ink around. And it will add a very soft, shiny touch to my wording. By the way, today's video is 18 minutes long and it took me an hour and 15 minutes to get it done. Going around with some uh, charcoal pencil just to accentuate um, the, um, the dirty side of my spread. It was looking too neat to my liking, despite all the splatters and everything. So I'm, I'm, I'm being pretty rough this week with my charcoal pencil. And I'm even adding it around the um, doily. So I did add some uh, splatters, white uh, splatters using Art Basics Heavy White Chesso that I diluted with some water. But I did that off camera because I was already uploading um, the footage from my camera to my computer. So you won't see me add that, but you will see it on the photos. And that's about it for today. If you liked today's video, um, I'm counting on you to hit the like button and I'm also counting on you to subscribe to my channel so that I can see you back next time. Just adding some more stamping and that's it. See you back next time. Have a good week. Ta-da!